Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about PCI of two consecutive bifurcation lesions in the LED, uh, in which uh, we use both the culotte and tap techniques. Uh, I've done a few videos on tap and culotte, and I've included the links uh, in the comments uh, section below. Uh, this case uh, nicely illustrates uh, the use of uh, both of the techniques. The patient is a 50-year-old woman uh, with no significant medical history uh, who presented to the ER with severe chest pain. ECG showed precordial T wave inversions. The initial troponin was positive of 0.74, and echo showed uh, EF of 40 to 45% with anterior hypokinesis. In the lab, uh, she had ongoing 5 out of 10 chest pain. Uh, the RCA and circumflex uh, both had only mild disease. Uh, the LED is shown, and uh, we see a severe stenosis at the ostium of a very large uh, second diagonal branch, as well as a haziness uh, in the uh, mid-LED. The um, LED and diagonal were both uh, easily uh, wired uh, with uh, workhorse wires. And in this view, you can see that the culprit appears to be uh, the severe lesion in the mid-LED, although the proximal LED appeared uh, to be disease as well. Uh, so what's our plan? Um, I think it's fairly clear uh, that bifurcation and stenting techniques uh, are going to be needed. So here are the most uh, common uh, bifurcation uh, stenting techniques, and uh, each have uh, advantages and uh, drawbacks. Uh, T-stenting uh, is the easiest uh, bifurcation technique, uh, but unless the side branch uh, takes off at close to 90 degrees from the main branch, uh, the ostium of the side branch uh, can be left uncovered. TAP, or T in protrusion, uh, is a, a modification of T-stenting, also very straightforward. Uh, and unlike T-stenting, it does provide good coverage of the bifurcation, uh, but it will leave behind a, a small neocarina and uh, is usually best suited for uh, larger bifurcation angles and uh, smaller side branches. Uh, I've uh, included links uh, to a couple of videos I did, I did on the tap stenting uh, in the uh, comments uh, section below. Um, next, uh, crush uh, is a very common technique uh, with uh, several different uh, variations and, and is very well studied. Uh, but it does leave behind three layers of uh, mangled stent material in the main branch, and uh, rewiring and passing equipment into the side branch for uh, kissing balloon angioplasty uh, can be challenging, especially if the vessels are smaller. And so for these reasons, I'm actually not a very big fan of crush unless we're in the left main uh, bifurcation uh, or in uh, larger um, vessels. And there's culotte, uh, which is also very well studied. Uh, that's suitable for all bifurcation angles. Uh, but for culotte, the side branch must be comparable in size uh, to the main branch. Uh, culotte does have a couple of drawbacks as well. Uh, it is the only technique uh, in which uh, you will temporarily lose wire uh, to the main branch. And it does leave behind uh, two layers of stents in the proximal part of the main branch. Uh, and uh, simultaneous kissing stents, uh, another technique which I don't show here, uh, is uh, easy, uh, but is usually only used uh, in an emergency, uh, mostly because it leaves behind a, a very large uh, stent neocarina, uh, making uh, future PCIs uh, very difficult. All right, so, so here's the plan. Uh, we're going to treat the mid-LED with a two-stent strategy. Uh, the LED and D2 uh, appeared comparable in size, so it seems suitable uh, for culotte. And after stenting the mid-LED, uh, we're going to do FFR uh, and decide if the proximal LED also needed uh, to be uh, stented. So again, uh, culotte stenting is a very uh, versatile uh, bifurcation technique uh, which uh, supports all bifurcation angles uh, with full coverage of the bifurcation. It does require that both branches of the bifurcation be comparable in size, but practically, this really just means that you have to be able to dilate the side branch stent uh, to the size of the main branch stent. So for instance, uh, if uh, you're using uh, Zion stents, uh, you should not do culotte if the main branch is 4.0 millimeter and the side branch is 2.25 millimeter because you can't uh, really take a 2.25 millimeter stent all the way up to a 4.0. However, uh, culotte would be feasible if the main branch were only 3.5 millimeter since you could dilate a 2.25 millimeter stent up to uh, 3.5 uh, millimeters. So um, there are two variations of culotte. There's true culotte and reverse culotte. 
Uh, and traditionally, Trucolat uh, is used uh, in a uh, primary two stent strategy uh, where you go in intending to stent both uh, branches. In this case, the first stent is deployed in the side branch, and that is usually the branch uh, that has uh, the greatest uh, angulation. After the uh, side branch stent is well post dilated, uh, the main branch stent is then deployed uh, through the stent cell of the side branch stent, and therefore its proximal part ends up uh, concentrically inside the proximal part of the side branch stent. The other variation is a reverse culotte. Uh, traditionally, a reverse culotte is considered a provisional strategy uh, where you go in intending to just stent the main branch and you only end up uh, stenting the side branch uh, if it becomes necessary. So in this case, the first stent to go in is uh, deployed in the main branch. And uh, after nicely post dilating the main branch, if necessary, the uh, side branch stent is deployed and therefore its proximal part ends up concentrically inside the proximal part of the main branch stent. Now, uh, I will say that I tend to use reverse culotte uh, even if I am planning from the beginning to do a two stent strategy. Um, this is because I would much rather make sure that the main branch is nicely open and stented uh, before I gel it uh, with a side branch stent. There's just something uh, about gelling a, a still disease main branch with a side branch stent that I find uh, deeply unpleasant. All right, so here we go. Uh, the LED and D2 uh, were both dilated uh, with uh, kissing balloon angioplasty. Uh, we then stented the LED with a 3.5 by 38 millimeter DES, and this forms uh, the first leg of the culotte. And again, uh, for the reasons that we just talked about, I'm doing reverse culotte here, even though I was planning from the beginning on a, a two stent strategy. And uh, here is where we are after uh, stenting the mid LED, uh, not too bad. Uh, we now need to rewire D2, uh, but this is key. Uh, remember to post dilate the LED stent extremely well uh, before uh, rewiring D2. Again, a key step here for Culotte. Uh, we post dilated the LED with uh, 3.75 and 4.0 millimeter NC balloons. Uh, post dilating the LED stent uh, before rewiring D2 uh, reduces the chance that the new D2 wire uh, will pass underneath the uh, LED stent. So after post dilating, uh, we easily rewire D2 with a workhorse wire. Uh, we then used a 2.0 millimeter balloon to dilate the LED into D2. This step opens up the LED stent cell uh, to allow easier passage of the new stent into D2 uh, through the LED stent cell. We then stented uh, D2 with a 3.0 by 23 millimeter DES uh, extending from the LED into D2. Uh, this stent is therefore concentrically inside the LED stent and forms the second leg of the reverse culotte. Uh, we've also just gelled the LED. Again, a second key step here for Culotte, uh, before rewiring the LED, we make sure that the D2 stent is post dilated extremely well uh, with 3.0 and 4.0 millimeter NC balloons. Uh, this reduces the chance that the new LED wire uh, will pass underneath uh, the D2 stent. So um, after rewiring the LED with a workhorse, uh, we did uh, kissing balloon angioplasty uh, with a 3.25 millimeter uh, balloon in the LED and a 2.75 millimeter balloon in D2. Now, how did we actually pick those sizes uh, for the uh, kissing balloons? Well, um, there are many rules of thumb out there, uh, but the most common one is probably the two thirds rule, uh, which is uh, derived from Finet's law which states that the uh, proximal vessel diameter should be equal to 0.678 times the sum of the kissing balloon diameters. And typically as 0.678 is simplified to two thirds, uh, hence the uh, two thirds rule. In our case, uh, we thought that the proximal vessel was about 4.8 millimeter in diameter, uh, which is two thirds of six, uh, which is the sum of 3.25 and 2.75. All right, so uh, here is the angiographic result after POT. Uh, POT is uh, recommended to make sure that the uh, stented segment is well expanded and opposed to the vessel wall proximally. But I actually don't think it's always necessary uh, if you have OCT or IVIS available uh, to assess uh, stent apposition. So anyway, the uh, mid LED and D2 look pretty good, uh, but the proximal LED, uh, now that looks a little bit suboptimal. 
So we did FFR, uh, which was positive at uh, 0 0.76. Uh, and and uh, we decided that the uh, proximal LED uh, also needed to be treated. The uh, proximal LED, unfortunately, was also a bifurcation, and D1 uh, was quite large. Uh, but we decided to see whether uh, we could get away uh, with a single stent provisional strategy in the proximal LED. So uh, we uh, pre-dilated the proximal LED with a 3.0-millimeter balloon, uh, stented with a 4.0 by 23-millimeter DES uh, overlapping with the mid-LED stent, and post-dilated uh, with a 4.0-millimeter NC balloon. And uh, here is the uh, result after proximal LED stenting. Uh, the LED looks great. Uh, D1, on the other hand, uh, does look a little bit hazy at its ostium. And uh, in this view, you can see why. Uh, D1 is uh, severely pinched uh, by the LED stent, and it is a pretty big vessel. Uh, so what's our plan? Uh, should we do another collat? So uh, we actually decided to try TAP. Now, I can hear your objections. Uh, TAP is generally used only for smaller side branches uh, to avoid a large stent neocarina. That is very true. Uh, but here we thought that the bifurcation angle was large enough uh, so that even a larger stent in the side branch would not create a tremendously large neocarina. So we thought that this bifurcation uh, could be suitable uh, for TAP. So uh, we wired the one with a workhorse. Uh, it did take a little bit of finesse. Uh, we then dilated uh, the LED and D1 uh, with a 2.0 millimeter balloon to open up the LED stent cell and allow easier passage of a stent into D1. Uh, next, uh, after uh, passing a balloon into the LED, we have to position the stent in D1. Uh, this is the most uh, tricky step uh, for TAP. Uh, you have to carefully position the D1 stent uh, so that its proximal edge aligns with the proximal border of the D1 ostium. Uh, you can tell where the proximal border of the D1 ostium is uh, by looking at where your uninflated D1 stent uh, crosses the outline of the LED stent. Uh, this step helps ensure uh, full coverage of the ostium of D1. After uh, we deploy the D1 stent, uh, we draw the D1 stent balloon partially back into the LED and do a uh, kissing balloon angioplasty. And uh, here is the result in LED and D1 after kissing balloon angioplasty. Uh, we did OCT of the LED, uh, which showed uh, excellent stent apposition, uh, so we did not have to do POT. And um, here is the uh, final andrographic result, uh, which we thought was very satisfactory. Uh, there was an excellent result in the LED and D1 bifurcation that was treated with TAP. And there was also an excellent result in the LED D2 bifurcation, uh, which uh, we treated uh, with a uh, culotte. All right, uh, some evidence. Um, there are a lot of data out there uh, comparing a provisional stenting with a primary uh, two-stent strategy, uh, with many uh, favoring uh, provisional stenting. Um, however, this study, uh, Definition 2, uh, which uh, came out uh, in the European Heart Journal in 2020, uh, enrolled 653 patients uh, with uh, true uh, bifurcation lesions. Um, they used uh, crush and uh, clot techniques uh, for their bifurcations. And uh, the study showed that uh, at least for true uh, complex bifurcation lesions, either a Medina 111 or Medina 011, a, a primary two stent strategy uh, using crush or culotte uh, led to a lower uh, target lesion uh, revascularization rate, a lower target vessel MI, and lower overall target lesion failure um, compared uh, to a, a provisional strategy. And finally, there's this nice uh, 2008 paper uh, from Japan in which they systematically looked at sizing of kissing balloons and did clinical validation using IVIS. I've included a very useful uh, table from the paper here. Uh, this table gives the diameter that one should expect in the proximal vessel when using kissing balloons of various sizes. So for instance, looking at the table, if the main branch balloon is 3.0 millimeter in diameter and the side branch balloon is 2.5 millimeter in diameter, then the proximal main branch will be dilated to about 3.91 millimeters in diameter. If you're facile with your mental arithmetic, uh, there is a formula that you can use to figure this out. Uh, but for most of us, um, it's probably easier just to tape this table on the wall in the cath lab somewhere. All right, uh, take home messages. 
Um, culotte is a nice technique uh, that is good for all bifurcation angles, but the side branch must be comparable in size to the main branch. Again, practically, this just means that you have to be able to inflate the side branch stent uh, to the size of the main branch stent. The key step, as we've emphasized, is to make sure that your stent is extremely well post dilated uh, before rewiring. As far as tap, uh, it is generally more, more useful uh, for smaller vessels and larger bifurcation angles. But as we've seen in this case, if the bifurcation angle is large enough, you can get very reasonable results, even with larger vessels. The key step here, again, is the uh, side branch uh, stent alignment step. You have to align the side branch stent so that its proximal edge lines up with the proximal side of the side branch ostium. Use the outline of the main branch stent uh, to help uh, with alignment. Finally, uh, sizing kissing balloons. Many rules of thumb, uh, the two-third rule uh, is probably the most common. In other words, the proximal vessel diameter should be roughly two-thirds of the sum of the uh, kissing balloon diameters. And that table from the 2008 Japanese study uh, could also be useful as a reference. Thank you for watching.